So you've got an old Mac somewhere in your house collecting dust. You just can't bear to part with it yet. So what can you do with it in 2023? Today, I'll show you three things you can do with an old Mac to put it to use once more. Those three things are Apple Content Cache, save a ton of internet bandwidth by caching all of your Mac updates, iOS updates, and application updates. We'll use our Mac as a network storage server, somewhere where we can store and share files centrally and all devices on our home network. And lastly, uh, an Apple Time Machine server. Great way to back up your current Macintosh. The Mac Mini that we will be utilizing today is a mid-2011 i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte SSD. And we're running Mac OS 10.13.6 High Sierra. Any Mac OS 10.13 or higher has the option for content caching. Ideally, whatever Mac you're choosing to use for this project, should be connected to your home network uh, via wired ethernet for best performance. Let's get started. All right, the first thing that we wanna to do to set up content caching, file sharing, and other things on an old Mac mini would be to first set up our power settings because we certainly don't want this machine going to sleep when it needs to function as a server. So if we go to the settings here, go to the energy tab. What we're gonna to wanna to do is computer sleep I slide this slider up to never, hit OK. We don't want our disk to sleep. And ideally, if the power runs out or goes out, we want it to reboot after a power outage. So we've got there, uh, that all set up in our energy saver. Our next step is in the system preferences menu again, under the sharing icon. And I don't know about you, but I like the ability uh, to be able to remotely log into my machines so that I don't need to have a monitor connected to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on screen sharing. This is going to let us uh, VNC into our local Mac Mini here. Uh, notably, if you've got multiple user accounts set up um, or you elect to use an account that's not an administrative type of user, you can also add that user here for permissions. File sharing going to be another awesome piece for our Mac Mini here. Uh, what I like to do when I leverage my little Mini here as a file server is to generate a folder somewhere, uh, whether it's in the Finder somewhere else or here on the desktop. I'm a desktop person myself. Um, I'm going to name this one Data. Actually, let's go Network Share. I'm also, while I'm in here, I'm going to use this Mac Mini as a Time Machine server. So I'm going to do a new folder here, call this one Time Machine. I'm going to come back to my sharing menu, and I'm going to also then select my folders to share. Got my network folder there. I'm going to come back in and add my Time Machine share. So for Time Machine, um, we need to go back in here and change um, some advanced options in our folder. So we right click it, go to Advanced Options. We're going to want to check this very last box that says Share as Time Machine Backup Destination. We can also limit that Time, share, that time Machine destination size um, to a specific uh, numerical amount of gigabytes. So for this example, let's use 300. And again, what we can do here is we can see that we've got all of our necessary users all set up, read and write, read only, read only for everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since I'm only using it on a local personal network, um, I'm just going to let everybody read and write here. Printer sharing, not necessary in our instance. Remote login, yep, let's let people remote in. This is going to give you the ability to SSH into your remote machine. Remote management can turn on as well and then finally content caching let's go ahead and check that box you can see here it's going to take a moment to start up and what we want to cache we want to cache all content so iCloud uh, content and shared uh, content as well so all content um, what content caching is going to do is going to take anytime your iPhone your MacBook your iPad 
um, any one of your Apple devices downloads a new application, updated app from the App Store, a system update of sorts, it's going to cache it locally on your little Mac mini server here. And then if you've got another device in the household, it's going to ship that, that same update out or application update out to that phone, iPad, MacBook, etc. Um, so super, super helpful if you've got some sort of limited internet connection in terms of bandwidth, especially helpful if you're running maybe a small business um, or you've got a house with several Apple devices here. I'm going to go into the options and my cache size at 250 gigabytes. That's good with me. So now we've got our file sharing set up. We've got remote login, remote management and content caching all turned on. Where we can see our content caching activity is under the activity monitor and then here under the cache section of activity monitor we can change our last seven days, last 24 hours. Um, once you turn on content caching uh, of course we're going to leave our little Mac Mini here running, uh, running non-stop in the background and then what you want to do is just restart all of your Apple devices, your iPhones, your iPads, your MacBooks, uh, so that they see this cache on your local network. So where we go from here is uh, we'll fire up our Apple devices, restart them, and then see if our content caching is working. Be back soon. We're going to check this content cache and how we can see it working here. As you can see, we've got some data received and data sent here on our Mac Mini. I go to my iPad, run it down here and update, and I've got 36 different apps to update. Go ahead and I'm going to update them all. And then what we should be able to see here on our Mini is data sent in and out. And we can see now here we've got a little blip coming in, data in, data out, as our applications update. All right, following up on our content cache usage. Uh, so we're about 24 hours in, and uh, you can see in the activity monitor under the cache tab that overall we've served 5.29 gigabytes updating all of our Apple devices in the last day and so far served from our cache um, or data served 807 megabytes so really cool to be able to break down and save a little bit of bandwidth all right so now what we'll do is connect our mac to our little mac mini server and go to go connect the server enter in the local address click connect select which folder you want to enter that's shared click ok and here you can see I've got a folder all set up with what I've saved to my local file server already. Quick, easy, and simple. To connect to our little Mac mini server, what we can do in Windows is to map a network drive. And we can do that by going to the File Explorer. Click down here on this PC. Right click. We're going to map a network drive. Going to assign it a letter, and then what we'll want to do here is Mac Mini local was the address, and then network share was our folder that we had created on the desktop. Enter in our super secret password. Make sure we typed it right. Remember credentials. Give it a shot. Whoa, here we are. We're connected. Awesome. You can see here we've got our screen recordings folder. That's a folder that I set up specifically to house some of the screen recordings um, and some of the other content caching video that I had generated with QuickTime screen recorder. So let's go ahead here and um, copy them over to a local folder on this laptop. I'm going to select all my files here. Drag them right over. You can see we've got uh, some good gigabit ethernet speeds here. 
Awesome. So now we've got all that content that we had saved on our little Mac Mini um, in here on this local machine. And the cool part here is that we can copy things back and forth between the two, uh, two machines. If we'd like to, um, we can always reference that machine from our new locally generated network location. So you can see we've got this network share macmini.local. That's what we just generated. There's my local file server. If we want to delete this or remove this, we can always right click and disconnect it and it'll disappear. And we can get back there again and map it again. Right click this PC, map network drive. Let's set it as M again. And then it was backslash backslash Mac mini dot local. And then backslash network share was the folder that we had generated on the desktop. So it's super easy to map these drives and to get them connected. Great way to leverage this little Mac mini as a, a network file share, something like that. And now that we have our server all set up, what we can do is get our time machine back up going. First thing we'll do on our MacBook here is click on General, the Settings menu, and then over to Time Machine, add a backup disk. And we're going to use Time Machine on MacMini.local. That's the folder that we had set up. For a registered user, let's log in with our MacMini username. Going to encrypt our backup and you'll see that it's primed and ready to go collecting some data here and let's see what happens next All right, we can see that our MacBook now is sending our data to our Mac mini server for our very first time machine backup. Notably, if you have a lot stored on your MacBook or any other Apple computer that you're using to backup to a time machine, it's going to take an extended period of time for your very first backup. Your supplemental backups all happen in the background when you open up your machine and log into it. And it only updates files that have changed on the machine. So. Um, for your first backup, it's always a wise choice to plug in your laptop to a power source and let it run.